Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video on my channel. If you are new or haven't been on my page before, my name is Jaden and I make hauls and vlogs and I talk about mental health. <laughs> so today I am going to go to the gym and that might not seem like a super big deal, but this is my first time going to the gym since discharging from inpatient treatment for an eating disorder. So that was back in January when I came home from treatment and it's now July. I haven't done any sort of movement in a while. Um, I say the word movement because I think that there can be bad connotations with exercise and working out. People usually only associate those two words with weight loss. So I just try to say movement and it keeps the term broad and it just is less triggering, I think. I honestly have no idea what type of workout I wanna do today. I honestly might just show up and walk on the treadmill and that would be a big win, I think. It doesn't really matter what type of workout I do. I'm trying not to be hard on myself. I don't want to intimidate myself too much. I don't wanna do anything too, I guess, scary as my first time back. The reason that I wanted to make a vlog of me going back to the gym for the first time is because I don't want to brush this off as something that's not important because it is. And I don't want to not thoroughly think through my feelings. So I thought if I made a video that I could share with you guys my experience. For a little history recap, I used to go to the gym five or six times a week and I would typically work out anywhere from like an hour and a half, an hour, two hours, it just depends on the day. I would have super strict rules about my exercising and I just really, really was hurtful on my, to my body. I had exercise anorexia. That just really means for me personally that I just was like addicted to working out. I guess it can be kind of like any other addiction. I was just addicted to working out in terms of like trying to lose weight. On top of working out, I also am a dancer and I was on my college dance team. So I would have like two hours of workouts for dance plus my own workout, plus like I was walking around my college campus, like my body was just put through a lot. Those reasons and like doctor's orders, I have stayed away from the gym for a really long time to let my body like heal and to wait until I was mentally ready and capable of working out again without it becoming an addiction. My dietitian, she's a wonderful lady, always has me go through my intentions when I decide to do any kind of movement. She wants me to like list out the reasons that I want to work out or do movement because if I list out the reasons I wanna do it, I can make sure that, you know, I'm not trying to do this to lose weight. I'm not trying to force myself to do this. Um, I won't feel guilty if I don't do this. I don't have societal pressure saying that I need to do it. Um, I'm not doing it to work off food I've eaten. I'm not doing it so that I can eat something else later. Um, there's just a whole list of certain um, disordered thoughts I could have. I thought I could share my intentions with you guys. My intentions today, are to number one, just get my body moving, which I was nervous was a disordered thought, but we are humans, we are animals, and we like to move. If anybody sits at a desk too long, they get antsy. Like kids need to have recess because they need to move. So that's not a disordered thought. <laughs> Second of all, I have changed in body size, which is okay. It's something that I'm dealing with because I've changed in body size, my muscles, and all of my inner goods have still not completely adapted to my new body size. And doing movement is one way to help your body adapt to your new size, if that makes sense. A cat can walk really easily in its cat body. But if a cat turned into a dog, it would need how to, to learn how to walk in its dog body. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm conditioning my body, but I'm not conditioning my body to be smaller. That's so confusing. I don't know. So I want to condition my body. I want to get moving. Also, I kind of just want to like relieve some stress and have some endorphins flowing. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got. I just want to honor my health in a non-diet culture way or a non-disordered way. So yeah, enough talking. I'm probably not very good at explaining this stuff. I'm still new to this. So let's go pick out an outfit. Goodwill popped off. This sports bra was like $3 there and it's so cute. Here's the back. We've got some like, cute little crisscrosses. I'm wearing this tank top from Meyer. 
these leggings. They're purple. I don't know if you can tell, but they're purple and they're from either Sam's Club or Costco. I want to say Sam's Club. And then a oh, sports bra from Goodwill. So if you're going to the workout, um, you really don't have to have Lululemon. Like it really doesn't matter. I promise. Even back in the day in my prime, not my prime, but like my prime gym going days, like even then I didn't really wear like the most expensive or nice gym gear. I just don't think it's necessary personally. Like you're really just going to sweat in them. So I just don't think it's necessary. Oklahoma. Oh my gosh. Some initial thoughts I'm having right now are one, it's hot as balls outside. And I'm like so happy that I'm not walking or doing any exercise outside because I would literally die. So like, if you can see when I'm in the light, I'm already sweating. Two, um, initially I was thinking, oh, I should definitely wear like an oversized t-shirt to like hide my stomach because a girl can't be caught looking bad at the gym, you know? But no, I'm wearing a tank top because I am gonna be hot. So why would I make myself more physically uncomfortable by wearing a large t-shirt and sweating more? So like. I want to be more comfortable and I shouldn't have to hide my body. So yeah, I'm glad that I chose to wear the tank top because I'm going to be hot and I shouldn't have to hide myself because other people are fat phobic, so bye. Hell no, this place is packed. Oh no, baby, it's so busy, baby. Hey guys, sorry if this clip is like super awkward because, well, one, I'm still walking on the treadmill, and two, there's like people around me, so I feel a little awkward. But, um, I've been walking on the treadmill for like 20 minutes, just walking. Um, I don't want to like do anything too crazy to like push myself too hard. Um, I forgot that <laughs> treadmills show how many calories you burn, and that was something I didn't want to have to look at, so. That was a little scary, I guess. I've just been trying not to look at it. Um, because I used to be very like obsessive over calorie counting, so it's not something I want to see anymore.
Hey guys, so this video is slightly overdue, maybe, I don't know, two weeks overdue. I am not sure why I procrastinating filming an exit slash summary of this video, but for some reason I just wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to say and some days I was just feeling a little lazy. Um, I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, I am now getting around to talking about how my first initial experiences have been at the gym. Since this video, I have been to the gym maybe four times, maybe five, and I thought I would just summarize all of these first initial experiences up together. So I have some notes from what I wrote down after my first workout and these were some of my thoughts. So first I obviously was struggling with comparing my body to other women's bodies at the gym. This time around I was just looking at girls that were you know wearing sports bras in the gym. This might sound weird but it's honestly the truth. I feel like when I was in my sicker body if my body I thought looked better than another girl's body, like it was just like Ed, which is who I refer to as my eating disorder. It, I refer to it as like a person, that's a whole other topic. But Ed is like cheering me on, like my eating disorders. Like yes, Jaden, like you're doing so good because you look skinnier than these other girls. But this time around, I was definitely feeling like lesser, like before comparing myself would uplift me, which is super toxic versus now comparing myself would was definitely like bringing me down and then I also wrote that I was feeling insecure around the men at the gym before I don't think I really like cared that much I don't know why maybe it was because I like Ed thought I was like hot stuff you know so I thought like maybe guys thought I was hot or something but like now like I'm like wow what if these guys just think I'm like so gross which is like a new thought for me, I guess. But on the other hand, I wrote that I felt very badass, kind of empowered in my bigger body in a way. Like I wasn't gonna pass out after this workout because I was fueled with food. I felt very strong, not just physically strong. Like I, I did feel physically strong. Like I was very proud of what I was able to accomplish this first time at the gym, but I also felt like mentally strong, like everything I've overcome, like look at me now, like don't come up to me, I'll fight you. Like. You see these boys like mm, like i'm badass so that's a positive um post gym eating is very tricky so leaving the gym after my first workout i was like should i eat like a burger to reward myself or a salad to like not spoil the workout either of those isn't good because you shouldn't reward yourself with food food is something you just do you eat it but also I shouldn't feel like a workout is something that can be spoiled like you do a workout and your workout is done like that's the end of it like you worked out like that's it there's no like erasing of that you don't go back in time and like undo it you just do it you just work out and it's over and like you did it you accomplished it great so I did end up just eating like something I would typically eat and not either reward or punish myself I guess so that was a win I don't really wear my Apple watch very much anymore at all because like I feel like the main thing I used to use it for was calorie counting but I've been wearing it a little bit more recently when I'm at work just because like I can't have my phone but I didn't wear my work my watch to this workout because I didn't want to calorie count and I feel like that's something that's very important to me like I just don't want to calorie count Along with the numbers topic, I did walk on the treadmill and I did forget the whole fact that treadmills show numbers. Treadmills show like your heart rate, they show the calories you're burning, of course, like your speed, all of that. A friend of mine let me know that next time I should bring post-it notes so that I can like cover up those numbers. But honestly, I didn't feel very triggered by the numbers. I just like saw them as facts, not as moral as in like, you're a good person if you burn this many calories. And that felt like really, really cool to like not be a slave to the numbers because in the past I had to run a certain specific speed. I had to do a very specific running routine, like 
I had to be done at a certain amount of time. Like it was just so exhausting. And again, I have not started running yet. I don't know if I will. I'm just not comfortable with that right now because like it was so, I think traumatizing, honestly. Along with not being so strict on numbers, I feel like when I was doing like my reps of like arm things, if I did like eight and I was like really hurting and I didn't want to do anymore, I didn't. Versus in the past, like I had to do 12, like 12 was my number. I know we're not really, I'm not supposed to really say numbers. <laughs> That's funny. It's just a rule in treatment. Like you just don't say numbers. Like if you've been in treatment, like you get it. I could be like bleeding out internally, but I had to do a certain amount of reps. So but I felt like very much so more, very much so more graceful. I just let myself stop if I wanted to stop. And then obviously I also have been struggling with comparing my workouts now to how they were in the past. Like for example, I'll do a certain workout and like my body will like literally shake. Like something that maybe was like super easy in the past is causing me to like shake now. But how I've kind of overcame that is to just like, again, look at the facts. I haven't moved my body in a very long time in this way. I mean, I've moved my body, but not to this extreme or this difficulty. So like, of course my body is going to be struggling. It doesn't mean that I'm lesser. It just means that I'm relearning. Also, my body's been through a lot. My body has literally been traumatized. So like, of course it's going to be um, just regrowing and rebuilding itself. So although bodies are amazing and they can do a lot of great things, they also need to be given time and fuel. And they don't just go from zero to a hundred. The iPhone three doesn't just become an iPhone 11. They're stages. Maybe that makes sense. The last thing that I've been thinking about a lot as I've been going back to the gym is I wonder if people think I'm there to lose weight. Now it doesn't matter what other people think, of course, but it doesn't mean I don't think about it because we all do. I remember like when I used to go to the gym, I would like see a bigger person and I'd be like, I wonder if they're trying to lose weight or I wonder how long they've been trying to lose weight. Or I maybe would think very um, fat phobic thoughts like, wow, they are obese. like they're unhealthy and things like that. And I just think it's like interesting because I feel like every person I see in a big body at the gym, I don't just think, oh, maybe they're just doing movement because they like to do movement. Or I don't think, wow, those people are so active. Maybe they have worked out their whole lives and they've just always been big. I don't know. These are just weird thoughts, but they just are what I think. Another note is that I have been scared that I would go every single day. Um, I was scared that like once I went one time every day, I'd be like, wow, I went yesterday. So why can't I go today? If I don't go every day, it doesn't count. I'm not doing good enough if I don't go, you know, four or five, whatever times a week. But thankfully I haven't went every day. Like I haven't let myself go every day. I've still been checking my intentions, checking the reason I want to go to the gym. Do I want to go to the gym to lose weight or do I want to go to the gym because I feel like I have to, to be productive or because I'll feel guilty if I don't, if I feel either of those things, I'm not going. So thankfully, like I have been able to let myself rest. I think the most I've went to the actual gym in a week is twice. And I think that like, that's a good starting point for me. So with all of these things being said, I do want to like put it out there that like, I'm not an expert. I'm only an expert on myself. And I'm barely an expert on myself, like ask my therapist, I'm a mess. Everybody's recovery journey is different. Um, and if you're somebody who is recovering from an eating disorder and you're not going to the gym, that is 100% okay. Going to the gym doesn't make you a better person. Going to the gym doesn't make you healthier, stronger, better at recovery, nothing. Like going to the gym is just something that like I used to love, I think, but it's like confusing because like, did I really love it? Or was I just there to lose weight? Like. And I, I won't know that until I try. That's kind of been like my thought process. Like, I think I genuinely know I don't love to run because I only did that to lose weight. But maybe I do genuinely have a passion for lifting weights because I think it's empowering and fun and fun to challenge yourself. So like, I'm just still discovering all of these things, like my intentions, um, things I truly love to do versus things Ed likes to do. So Again, if you're not working out, it doesn't make, mean you're a bad person or bad at recovery. It's not a requirement for recovery at all. Like, 
when I left my inpatient treatment place, my dietitian suggested I don't work out for an entire year initially. And that was in January. So she still wouldn't have even wanted me to go to a gym until next January. But I mean, I've talked to my dietitian now and like, she's okay with it. And like, we worked it out, so it's okay. But like everybody's path is just so different. So don't compare yourself. This video is a little different than some of the other ones I have filmed so far, but if you do enjoy me talking about my eating disorder recovery and just honestly rambling about my opinions and journey, um, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> um, also comment what other recovery topics you would like to hear about or just any body positivity, um, food, anything you're interested in. Um, I would love to keep making videos like this because I do think that awareness needs to be spread about eating disorders. And honestly, like me talking about all of these things is like a way for me to like keep in touch with my recovery because this is like journaling almost, but like vocally journaling it keeps me in check. I don't know. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in another video. Mwah.